Good morning, friends and family church. Pastor Emmanuel coming your way today from the sanctuary here in our church, First Baptist of Stockbridge. We are living in a very, very interesting times. And most people think that the church is closed. But that is far from the truth. Because you see, beloved, I'll be showing you in a minute, the church is never about buildings. When the Lord Jesus Christ declared that his, he will build his church, his mind was not towards a building. It was towards you and me, the people of God. And I want to turn with me quickly to 1 Corinthians chapter number 3, verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. As we set the record straight and truth is communicated regarding the church. Paul is writing to the church and he declares, don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you? So here, Paul tells us that the church is not a building. The church is you and me. So I've come here to encourage you, church is not closed. Nobody can close the church. Yes, they can close buildings, and we need to respect that, but nobody can close you and me, which is the church of the living God. Glory be to his name. Today, I'm going to speak to you on the title, None is Lost. Write it down. None is Lost. We are dealing with a very, very weird virus that it seems to be taking lives across our TV screens and across our radios, and it creates fear. But what is God's word to me and you, the children of God, as far as the time and the season that we are living in? Are you doomed to be lost? Is it over? The truth is that you are going to hear the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ declaring to you today, and I'll show you examples, that as a child of God, you will not be destroyed. You will not be lost. You are forever in the arms and security of the Savior, Jesus Christ. Join with me as we pray, and we'll go right into the Word of God for today. Heavenly Father, your Word is true, and we thank you for building your church. We thank you, Lord, for such a time as this, that you can speak truth to all of us, letting us know, Lord, that the church is never about buildings, but me and my brothers and sisters in the Lord, us, the people of God. I pray that today, as your word come forth in power and in truth, full of grace, that you will awaken the sleeping church, that your people will know that this is an opportunity time for us to be in ministry and work in partnership with you in the world. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit will speak to all of us, including myself. I pray that you hide me behind the cross, that your people will hear your voice, Jesus. That's who you are. May you bless this time, O oh God, and be glorified in all that will take place the few minutes that we have today. Thank you for bringing us in line with your truth, and as that truth you declare will set us free. Be glorified, Lord Jesus, in everything that will take place today. In your name, we pray thanksgiving. Amen. The Gospel of John, chapter number 17. Please pick up your Bibles at home. Thank you for allowing me to come into your homes, your offices. Wherever you are, listen to the sound of my voice. The Gospel of John, chapter number 17. The content is prayer. Jesus Christ is praying. And if you study that chapter very well, and I encourage you to take time and study with me the word of God here in John chapter 17. When you go home, read it over and over again. And you will realize that the word prayer, pray, praying, is repeated all around this chapter here. It is a a prayer 
from our Savior, Jesus Christ, before he went to the cross. Join with me, John chapter 17, pick up from verse number 6 to 12. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying, watch this, for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. Verse 11. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. Whilst I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None is or has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that scripture will be fulfilled. Hear the voice of the Savior. He declares in his praying, none is lost. What a powerful phrase, beloved. None is lost. Jesus Christ is confirming that whilst he was here on earth, the people that placed their faith in him, the disciples that believed and walked with him for three and a half years, he protected all of them every day. And by the time he was getting ready to go to the cross, which I'll show you, none, not a single soul of his disciples perished. Not a single soul of his disciples were lost. The virus that has taken hold of our world can create massive fear and anxiety. But I've come to give you good news, beloved, as a child of God. You are being protected by the Savior of your soul. Jesus Christ is his name. He tells you, he did it before. He protected those who trusted in him whilst he was here on earth. In the prayer, he tells us he's about to go to the cross and he's going to give his life to the world. He'll be crucified. He'll be buried. On the third day, he'll rise from the dead. And now he will ascend into the Father in heaven. He tells us all that detail here in this prayer. And he assures us that as he was on earth, he protected and kept his disciples safe. So I have come to let you know today, beloved, the Lord will protect his children. The Lord will keep us safe in this time of turbulence. The Lord will glorify himself in all of our lives. Pastor Emmanuel, what happens if a child of God happens to be asleep or die from this virus? That means, hear me well, that child of God, their purpose on earth is finished. The reason why they came to this earth, what God assigned them to do, they have completed that work. That is why he will allow them to join with him in heaven. But you and me, hear me well, you are not going to be destroyed by this virus unless your season and your time has come. Let me prove to you in the scriptures three examples I'm going to show to you how the Lord protected his disciples whilst here on earth. The first one is coming from the Gospel of Mark. The Gospel 
of Mark. Go there with me. Matthew, Mark Gospel. Mark chapter number four. Mark chapter number four. Turn with me your Bibles at home as we are having church. Praise the Lord. Mark chapter number four. Read with me from verse number 35 to 41. Mark Gospel chapter four, verse number 35 to 41. The Bible declares, that day when even came, he said to his disciples, Jesus is speaking, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was in the boat. There were other boats with them. 37, a furious squad came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stand sleeping on the cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we are drawn? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Quiet, be still. Hold on to that phrase. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. Verse 40. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified, the disciples, and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Praise the Lord. Here is a situation that is a life threatening. Here is an event that can be verified, it happened to the disciples of Jesus Christ. They are traveling with the Lord in the boat. The Lord is physically, hear me well, that word is physically present with them. They can touch his body. He is right there with them. They are traveling. But the Lord goes and takes a nap. He is sleeping. He is so at peace sleeping that they have to go actually wake him up. Listen, beloved. Waves has noise. Wind blowing has noise. But none of those noise are waking the Lord up. That means he was completely at peace in the boat. Why? Because he told them, let us go over to the other side. When he gave that word, it is a done deal. He knows whatever comes in between, whatever storms will come their way they will arrive safely on the other side. I have come to preach to you today, beloved, that this virus will not stop God's purposes for your life. You will arrive in God's purposes and God's destiny for your life. Praise the Lord. They came and awakened him. Listen to what they said. Teacher, don't you care? Don't you care? Okay. Many people are repeating this phrase today. They are thinking, why has the Lord allowed such a distraction to be in his world? Does God love mankind? Does God care for mankind? You are not the first one, beloved, to question God in that respect. The disciples question him, don't you care? You see, when you are in the midst of of crisis like this, if you're not careful, beloved, hear me well, if you're not careful, you will miss the character of God. God is a God of love. The love of God has never changed in his world. I believe this virus has been allowed by the Lord for a reason, to prove to the whole world that he can shut everything down because he is the one who is in charge of the world. It's not the devil. Remember the devil we are told, John 10.10, 10, he came to kill, to steal, and to destroy. That's the devil's work. Jesus declared, I came that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Abundant life is God's will, beloved, for you. When he awake, listen to what he did. 
the Bible said, let me read that again to you. He said to verse number 39, that he got up, rebuked the wind, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, quiet, be still. <laughs> I love it. Just instruction given to this natural, phenomenal magnitude that is creating havoc that can destroy life. He speaks to it and it became quiet. I have a good news for you. God can speak one word and the whole 19 virus can disappear from his word. He doesn't have any hindrance of doing that, but he has allowed it to keep going for his own purpose. And you need to know, beloved, that God has power to silence this virus. Medical science, we thank God for them. Doctors, we thank God for them. Our leaders, we thank God for them. But they don't have the solution to this issue. Only the Lord Jesus has the solution, and I believe he will do it at the right time. Amen. Let me show you the second example of how God protected his own during crisis. Mark Gospel, the same Mark Gospel, look at chapter number six. Mark's Gospel, chapter number six. Read with me from verse number 41, excuse me, 45 to 51. Mark six, Mark six, 45, 45 to 51. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to Bethesda while he dismissed the crowd. After leaving them, he went up on a mountainside to pray. Don't miss that key word. He went up on a mountainside to pray. Verse 46 is crucial to understanding what I'm about to teach. Verse 47. When evening came, the boat was in the middle of the lake, and he was alone on land. Verse 48, he saw the disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them. About the fourth watch of the night, he went out to them, walking on the lake. He was about to pass by them, but when they saw him, walking on the lake, they thought he was a ghost. They cried out because they all saw him and were terrified. Look at that word, terrified. Immediately he spoke to them and said, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Then he climbed into the boat with them and the wind died down, I love it. They were completely amazed for they had not understood about the lows, their hearts were hardened. I just added a verse 52 to it. Beloved, this is another classic example, a verifiable event that happened in the life of Jesus and the disciples. This one is different from the first experience. The first experience, you realize that in Mark chapter 4, he was with them inside the boat. This experience, he told them to get ahead of him and go on the other side, whilst he, Jesus, look at verse 46, he goes into the mountain side to pray. They have gone on a different direction. The disciples are on the lake. Jesus is on the mountain. Don't miss that. The disciples are on the lake. Jesus is on the mountain. We are told, look at verse number 47. When evening came, the boat was in the middle of the lake and it was, he was alone on land. He saw, look at verse 45. He saw, excuse me, verse 48. He saw the disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them. The disciples have met a storm that came unannounced. They are on the lake. Jesus is on the mountain. But as soon as they met this unannounced storm, 
the Bible says he saw them from where he was and then he came straight to where they are. Jesus physically was not present with them, but he saw them. You see, beloved, the Lord is in heaven. His church is on earth. And we are dealing with this crisis in the world he created. The Lord sees it all. Amen? The Lord knows exactly what is coming and what we are dealing with in his world. This is not the time he's going to turn his back on us. He sees our struggles. He sees us losing jobs. He sees us struggling as small business owners. He sees our government uh, uh, trying to figure out what to do. He knows it all. He comes in and he walks on the, on the lake. The storm that they are dealing with is underneath the Lord. The Lord is walking on the lake. The storm is beneath him. The storm is beneath the Lord. Amen? He is walking on what they are afraid of. Again, here we see another example of how the Lord came and protected his disciples so that none is lost. None is lost. Let me show you the third example as we're wrapping up. Go with me to the Gospel of John. John's Gospel, chapter number 18. Praise the Lord. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. John's Gospel, chapter number 18, the third example. None is lost is the sermon title today. None is lost. John's Gospel, chapter 18. Pick up with me, verse 1 to 9. When he had finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kindron Valley. On the other side... There was an olive grove, and he and his disciples went into it. Now Judas, who betrayed him, knew the place, because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas came to the grove, guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and the Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns, and weapons. Verse 4, Jesus, knowing all this was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, who is it you want? Again, who is it you want? Verse 5, Jesus of Nazareth, they replied, I am he. I learned that phrase, I am he, in your Bible. I'll come back to that. Jesus said, and Judas the traitor was standing there with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. I love that. Again, he asked them, who is it you want? I told you, and they said, Jesus of Nazareth, I told you that I am he, Jesus answered, verse 8. If you are looking for me, then let these men go. Let these men go. This happened so that the words he has spoken will be fulfilled. I have not, listen carefully, I have not lost one of those you gave me. None is lost. This is the last experience the Lord is having with his disciples at the Garden of Gethsemane. As they've gone to arrest the Lord, to try him, and of course he's going to go to the cross, give his life to the world. will be crucified, buried on the third day, rise again. This is the last scene. And we see how here again in this test, the Lord makes it clear. They came to arrest him and they asked, we are looking for Jesus of Nazareth. Let me draw attention to verse number four. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. I am he, Jesus said. And Judas, the traitor, was standing there with them. Verse 6, don't miss that. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. The word of God. 
just the power of that word was like a tornado. It pushed all of them to the ground. Listen, here is a classic example that shows that the Lord Jesus has to lower himself for them to arrest him. They could not because just his word is a weapon that is already about to take all of their life away. Amen. And then here he tells them, if you are looking for me, then let these ones, these ones are the disciples that are with him. Let them go free. He will not allow them to arrest the disciples. He will not allow them to destroy the disciples. He set them free. And now John add to it, telling us that this happened to fulfill prophecy in verse number nine. I have not lost one of those you gave me. I have not lost one of those you gave me. Beloved, hear me well. You are secured. Let me repeat. You are secured in Jesus Christ. The Lord will not allow you to perish at these challenging times. The Lord will not allow you to be destroyed. The Lord will not allow anything bad to happen to you. Beloved, this is the truth of the gospel. You are very important to your Savior, Jesus Christ. And as a servant, he has sent me here to tell you that you are secure. All these three examples are life-threatening. But in each situation, beloved, the Lord shows that he's able to protect us from the evil one. Let me close by saying, go with me to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Look with me at verse number 39, one verse. John 6, verse 39. John 6, verse 39. Praise the Lord. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all that he has given me, but raise them up at the last days. Jesus declared the will of the Father is not to lose any of his children. Any of his children. And if it happens that this is your season and you are falling asleep, the world described that as dead, but the scripture described a child of God as falling asleep, he declares, I will raise you up at the last day. I will raise you up at the last day. You are secured forever. You are eternally secured in the arms of your Savior. That is the gospel. That is the truth. Pastor Emmanuel, what happened? If I'm not a child of God, what do I do? I'm glad you asked. God has silenced everything around the world. Hear me well so that you can get to know him. God is giving you one more chance in the business of life. Now everything is standstill. You have no choice but to stay at home. And to stay at home is not to just watch TV, sleep, get up, eat. No, God wants you to get to know him. This is the time you can get to know the Lord. If you don't know him, I have good news for, for you. I want you to pray this prayer after me today and you can become a child of God immediately after this prayer as you trust in Jesus Christ say after me dear God I know I am a sinner I ask for your forgiveness I believe Jesus died for my sins and rose from the dead I turn from my sins and I invite Jesus to come into my heart and life. Lord Jesus, I will trust you and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you 
for saving me today. If you have prayed that prayer, congratulations, you have become a child of God. Now, like a baby, you need to grow. You need food to grow. That is the time I want to introduce you to you the Word of God. Start with the Gospel of John. Begin from chapter 1. And as you study, the Holy Spirit will begin to speak to you. And as you pray, prayer is simply talking to God like I'm talking to you today. Study the Word of God. It's the food for your spirit. That's how you're going to grow. The Word of God is food. And prayer is your communication to God as you pour all your concerns on him. The Bible says, cast all your cares on the Lord. He cares for you. Third, you need a good, solid Bible teaching home to grow in your faith and become a disciple of Jesus Christ. The purpose why you are saved is to share Jesus with somebody else. It's called sharing your faith or witnessing. I encourage you that our church door is open to you. Here at First Baptist of Stockbridge, we meet every Sunday, 1045. When we get back to the building, you can definitely enjoy the fellowship, beautiful church, beautiful people here. You will grow in your faith as you walk with the Lord. You can also call me. I will leave my number on, on the page for more information as I connect you to the church. And it's important to you, beloved, that you grow in your new found faith. To the Christians out there already, beloved, this is not the time to be glued to your TV. This is the time to grow in faith and in knowledge with the Lord. The Lord has given us this opportunity as all families are home with our children, especially our children. I encourage all parents to open the Bible and teach your children the word of God. Disciple them. Pray with them. Get their questions and answer their questions for them. They are going through a lot of mind uh, 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 tormenting because they don't know what's going on. But this is a time that we can grow strong in our faith with the Lord. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the truth of your word. Today, we do know that we are not bound by no limitation. Thank God for the blessing of the social media where we can continue the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The word of God, the truth of life. Lord, I pray as you spoke to us, let your Holy Spirit carry these words and apply it to where your people are living. Bring it in a reality to the things they are facing in life and let them know as you spoke clearly today from your word, none is lost. None is lost. Thank you for your faithfulness, O oh God, to protect your children. For your faithfulness, O oh God, to love on us. For your faithfulness, O oh God, to provide for us in these challenging times. Lord, we surrender to your perfect will. We pray, let your will be done in the world. Give us wisdom. Bless our leaders with wisdom, especially our president, President Donald Trump, and the entire leadership around him, those in the House of Congress and Senate. Bless them with wisdom, the governors of all the states. Give them insight and wisdom on what to do to alleviate the pain and the losses that has happened all around us. Above all, Lord, I pray that you have the power to speak your word and declare seas of this pandemic. I, I am trusting you, Lord Jesus, to bring it to pass as your people pray and believe in you. Thank you for your unfailing love and your abundant mercy. In your name, Lord, we pray thanksgiving. Amen.